Robots are everywhere. The long-awaited rise of the robots comes out on computer formats tomorrow. The game has artificial intelligence, so when you play against the computer, the opponent robots learn your favourite moves. They can then adapt their tactics to make things more difficult for you. Console versions will be out next month. Those nice people who brought you FIFA Soccer have a new sports sim in production, Rugby World Cup 1995. Rugby is a hard game to convert into a playable simulation because of all the stopping and starting. Out on the Mega Drive next month. The cult novels of American writer and illustrator Mark Schultz have been turned into a CD game. Cadillacs and Dinosaurs takes you to a world 600 years from now when the human race is in danger of being wiped out by prehistoric creatures. Out early next year on Mega CD and PC CD-ROM. Oh, brilliant! Uh, the amazingly accurate, technologically advanced alarm clocks. Uh, oh, Fertlers, these alarm clocks are brilliant! Uh, there's one which is accurate to a millionth of a second every 800 years. There's one which projects the time. Look at that! Hey! And uh, there's even one which you throw at the floor when the alarm goes off to stop it. Ah, brilliant! <laughs> and equally brilliant is this cheat for Fatal Fury on the Mega Drive. On the continue screen, just hold down up A, B and C, then let them all go and repeat the process, and each time you do, you'll get an extra credit. There we go, nine! <laughs> oh, must have accidentally set the alarm. <laughs> oh, no! The wrong one! Oh, dear! <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'll give it to Violet and tell her it's a build-it-yourself alarm clock kit. <laughs> Thing is, she'll believe him as well. Meet Doc. Doc is a very stupid robot. Stupid because he's been programmed to do one thing and one thing only. That is to play follow my leader a bit like a duckling, as have all these guys down here. So if they want to dutifully follow Mother Duck, who in this case is the unlikely figure of Colin on camera four, if he pulls away, they will follow him. Go on, Doc, keep up, keep up. They see in here a bit like a bat does. They send out high-pitched ultrasonic signals and then listen for the echoes coming back. And don't they look sweet? <laughs> and this one's just as cute and just as stupid. It behaves like a puppy, which means it'll follow you anywhere, just like Andy's duckling, but when you turn it, it gets scared and backs off. The reason these robots are stupid is because they're only programmed to do one thing, to either follow or avoid. And they have no knowledge of their environment, nor can they learn from their experience because they haven't got any memory either. Get out of here. They call this one the cat. It's got more sensors and three rules of behaving. Rule one is to avoid obstacles. As you can see, it's backing away from the shoes there. Rule two is to avoid enemies, represented there by an infrared beacon being held by Abby. Rule number three is to stalk prey. The prey is being represented by another infrared beacon. And there he is following his nose, going after the prey. Another clever thing is that it can recharge itself when it gets tired. And we recorded it earlier today doing just that. It can find its own electricity supply and dock with it. When its batteries are fully recharged, off it goes back on the prowl. This is Bashful. Bashful is the only one that isn't stupid because Bashful can learn from his experiences. When you switch him on, he knows literally nothing at all. What he wants to do is go forward without running into things, but he doesn't know how to do it. So at the moment, He's just doing random motor movements to see what that makes him do. And he's thinking about what signals the sensors are sending back to him. If he runs into something, he'll recognize the next time the sensors send that same signal to avoid it. When he's given time and space to learn like he is doing now, he learns quite quickly how to go forward. But if we're cruel to Bashful, let me switch him off so he forgets everything he's learned. And guys, all come in in a big tight circle. Get your feet out and we put Bashful down and switch him on again. If he learns in this hostile environment, you see he behaves really spasmodically and erratically because he can't learn because there's no space for him. Now, if we all step back together, now, you see he's still behaving in that erratic manner. He still hasn't yet learned how to go forward. This is because, really, he needs the wide open spaces. He needs sort of freedom to learn and develop and, and sort of Although evolve as a robot. Although they may seem crude, these I mean, robots the are among the most intelligent ever robots, made. Like, They've been designed at Reading University to test out ideas that will lead to the R2-D2 and, and C-3PO of the future. He should be allowed to ride on his future. bike without a stabiliser. Uh, yeah, he should be you, told he can I come in for his tea before half past six. And now for some more games reviews. Magic Carpet is the first PC game we've ever reviewed on Bad Influence. The game is a flight sim, arcade shoot 'em up and strategy game all rolled into one. You're one of eight wizards vying to take control of a world filled with strange mythical beasts. 
Your challenge is to collect special energy called mana, and your weapons are powerful magic spells. And, unlike most flight sims, however hard you try, you can never crash the carpet. Here's Adam. We just don't have time in a review this short to do justice to a game that's this big, but believe me, it is really good. The minimum you need to run this game is a 486 PC with 4 megabytes of memory, but to really get the best out of it, you need a beast PC. When you first start the game, you don't have any spells, which is a bad thing if you're a wizard, so you've got to collect them from red urns which are scattered about the landscape. When you pick one up, the icon on the top right tells you what you've got. This one lets you build your castle. You might think that Paul Daniels has got some magic spells. Hmm? He hasn't. With a bit of power on this game, you can have meteor storms. A bit more, you can create your very own earthquakes. And you can have your very own army of skeletons for when the killing gets too much for even a wizard of your stature to handle. This is a really good game, very original. But to play it properly, you need a lot of time and a lot of money. This is simply stunning. It's quite a hard game to get into, though, because the story is rather complicated. This is the first flight sim I've ever been bothered to play. It's a really nice looking game with some brilliant ideas. The boys and the girls agree. Magic Carpet gets a great game if you can afford it. Five out of five. Vortex is the latest game to use the SNES Super FX chip. The worlds are all in 3D, so you can move in any direction. Also, you can transform your fighting craft into different battle systems. Here's Aisha. When you first play this game, it takes ages to figure out where you're supposed to be on screen. And then when you do, it's really difficult to control. This is the first level of the game, where you have to fly through space and shoot things that are targeted. It's pretty hard to play this game. It's particularly hard to control, and I didn't find it very playable either. I'm not impressed. It's not a patch on Starwing. I'm not even excited by the graphics as I've seen them all before. I quite like this. It's a simple but effective 3D shooter map with no pretensions. I don't like this chunky polygon look, and I'm not too crazy about the gameplay either. It's just an average shoot 'em up. Scores then. Vortex gets an ordinary three from the boys and the girls. <laughs> oh, oh, brilliant! <laughs> the relaxing and easy to wear massage shorts. Hey, oh, Furtlers, you too can now enjoy the pleasures of a relaxing massage with these rugged yet inconspicuous massage shorts. I'm also wearing the matching massage belt neck exerciser and head vibrator. I can't wait to try them out. But first, today's last cheat for Micro Machines on the Game Gear. Race backwards on the first lap on the breakfast table course. And then after one lap, you'll hear a tone that confirms the cheats worked. You'll now end up in first position after every race, regardless of where you actually finish. <laughs> and now, time for my relaxing and enervating, but discreet and inconspicuous massage. <laughs> Massage shorts. Whoa. <laughs> Massage belt. Whoa. <laughs> Neck exerciser. Whoa. <laughs> Head vibrator. Whoa. Way. Whoa. 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 That's what I call good vibrations. Last week's competition prize was a SNES and a copy of Street Racer. We asked you which Formula One Grand Prix is raced around the streets of a European city rather than a racetrack. And the answer, as 17,000 of you phoned in, is the Monaco Grand Prix, which is held every year in Monte Carlo. And the winner, as randomly selected by the Bad Influence computer, is Craig Richards from Derbyshire. Well done. Ten runners-up get Bad Influence Best in Sleep t-shirts. This week's prize is this state-of-the-art, astronomically fast Pentium PC with magic carpet. I kid you not. And the competition question is, not including Z, how many people have walked on the moon? If you think you know, you can give us a call with your answer on 0891 555 0891 555 Call will cost you no more than 25p. Lines stay open until midnight on Monday, but do please...